Welcome to an emergency edition of the PHNX Coyotes podcast. I'm Leah Merrill here with Steve Peters and Craig Morgan. And obviously, it has been a tumultuous roller coaster of a day. Mm -hmm. um, lots to talk about, obviously, with reports coming out that the NHL and the Coyotes are preparing for a possible relocation to Salt Lake City. We're going to have a lot to get to. But before we get into all of it, just how's everybody? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. We're, we're, yeah. we're here to chronicle the news. It, so, yeah. yeah. And, and this is hard. This is hard for a lot of us. And and I know we've always held out hope that things ended differently. And, and uh, honestly, until the ink is dry on the contracts, it still may be. And we're going to talk to a few guests about that coming up. Um, but this is a tough day for Coyotes fans. Okay. Well, without further ado, I, I think we've already let everyone know Frank Sarvalli will be here. He is actually in the green room. We're going to bring him in right now to talk about the report that he put out earlier. Hello, Frank. First of all, thanks for joining us. I um, want to say thank you. Um, and I, I, I want to get this off my chest as well. You and I have had some disagreements. I, I think you thought maybe I was being disrespectful to your reporting. And, and looking back at it, I think maybe you were fair in, in thinking so. So, I want to apologize for that to you directly. Um, you obviously have been diving deep into this story, and I know you have a lot of sources, not only maybe uh, you know on on the Salt Lake and team levels, but also at the league levels. So let's uh, let's. I want to hand this over to Petey for just a moment, and then we'll get into your report. Okay? Yeah, and I want to say something, and, and I'm not a big social media guy, and and clearly people that follow me or follow the show know a lot of things I say in sarcastic or in jest, and sometimes taken out of context, and people don't know who I am, they may misread those comments. And 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 I want to say a few days ago, I want to clear the air. Um, I, I sent some tweets to Frank. Um, a few days ago, and you go back and look at them for contents. I just want to say that Frank, as a reporter, he's been covering the NHL for 15 years and has credible sources inside every single aspect of the game, including the league. He has broken stories across North America for years. And guess what? I haven't. I, I've been in the room. I have friends that work in the NHL. I've been in the NHL for 25 years, but I am not a reporter. I want to make that clear that at no point in our tweet exchanges did Frank or I call each other names. We didn't use profanity or make personal attacks. The issue was with sources giving us different comments and opinions. It was not Frank versus Petey. And lastly, if the Coyotes do move to Salt Lake City prior to the start of the 24-25 season, I promise I will be the first to give Frank his flowers on his reporting. I have seen this team on the verge of moving before, and I will hold out hope with, until Commissioner Bettman makes an announcement. But in the meantime, please do not call Frank or I names. No personal attacks. You can debate. Give differing opinions. Share your hopes on the team that you follow, but don't make personal attacks. And if either of us is wrong in the reporting, acknowledge it, but don't disparage it. Use your right to unfollow. Thanks for listening. And Frank, welcome to the show. And I want to say this, thank, Frank, thank goodness it's not a written story because as we all know, not a good speller. <laughs> not not a good speller. Couldn't spell Houston. <laughs> Sorry. I will do better. It's not the only word, Frank. Thanks, Frank. I appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Yeah, no, hey, um, I really appreciate you guys having me. And first off, yeah, I'd like to say a few things as well. Um, look, this, I can't, I, I wish I was here under better circumstances, first yeah. off. Uh, second, I would say that... Um, I have such a huge amount of respect for Coyotes fans. Um, I think it's bullshit that when you go arena to arena, you hear players, coaches, whatever it might be, best fans in the NHL. The Coyotes quite literally have that claim, I think, because through all the thick and thin, um, I'm not pandering here. Like there really hasn't been a whole ton to root for and be invested in. And yet I'm looking at the numbers continue to grow on this show. And I'm looking at the people that fill Mullet Arena on a night to night basis. And, you know, previously at jobbing.com in Glendale and everywhere else, I've been to the games. I know that there are real hockey fans in Phoenix and I'll take it a step further. Um, I'm actually, if you really want my personal opinion, I'm a big believer in Phoenix being a 
true hockey market where it can work. I think for a million reasons, which you guys have chronicled over the years, it just hasn't mostly starting with ownership. And then the next part being the arena and we can talk about that forever, but throughout my reporting process, as we've gone, you know, through the gamut here, the last number of months, I just want anyone to know that whenever I talk about the coyotes or report about the coyotes and what might happen, none of that's coming from a place where I'd like to sit here and gloat and say, Hey, I'm glad this team is gone. It's nothing like that at all. It's just pure, Hey, here's what's happening behind the scenes. Some of it, uh, there's a lot of nuance to it. Some of it is we all talk to different people. Um, there's no part of me that's sitting here saying, Hey, you know, give me credit. I'm right. Whatever that may be. That's all. I don't need that. Um, honestly, just trying to do my job in terms of reporting to the best that I can. And I do that with a healthy dose of respect for you guys and your show, um, the coyotes fans. And also as a fan of the marketplace, like I, I wish this were different. Yeah. Thanks for saying that, Frank. Let's, let's get into it. Okay. In your report today, you said the decision has not been made yet on whether to relocate to Salt Lake City or keep the team here for one more year. But based on your reporting and what your sources are telling you, what are you thinking the likelihood of relocation is at this point? Oh, um, it's pretty high. I would say it's probably a 90 to 95 percent shot. I think um, you have to always allow for the possibility that things go haywire, but I do think that there is the framework of an agreement that I'd say most of it has been agreed to. Um, the NHL's board of governors, and it's actually a really exclusive list of governors, not like they blasted this out to everyone. The league provided an update to them essentially saying, you know, amid this media speculation, kind of what's happening. And I think they know enough to know now. And I think there's Coyotes players that have been informed of some part of this too, that look, we're dealing with semantics in terms of what the actual wording of it is. Is there a verbal agreement or, you know, whatever that might be, they're pretty far down the track on the agreement of a sale and ultimately to relocate this team. Help me understand why the NHL would late wait so late in the game to make this decision after telling Alex Morello to pursue the state trust land purchase via auction that is now set for June 27th. We're we're about two months away now. So why now instead of waiting to see what the outcome of that auction might be? I think it's a fair question. It's one that honestly I don't have the answer to. I can tell you that behind the scenes, I think this has been an ongoing conversation. And I think for the longest time, um, part of the answer to that is, as best I could tell you, is Alex Marowello has been pretty headstrong in resisting any talk of something like that, that he's been so steadfast in his belief that he can not only win a land auction, but actually get a building built and 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 the all the development that goes along with that that he he hasn't entertained the thought and idea of that and so to be fair that's actually another reason why i'm really careful in the language that i've used in my reporting today is because the league is also concerned that this might not get to the finish line that this might not actually get signatures on it what they're trying to avoid is um, a long and protracted battle, which if Alex Murrowello as owner of this franchise decides to dig his heels in on and not sell, um, no one's happy. So they don't want to go down that path. The league is still a believer in the market. The league uh, still has some, I guess, semblance of um, faith in, in Alex Marowello that he can pull this off because we'll talk about it. There's another aspect to this deal that's expected to be included in some language about bringing an expansion franchise back in, in the future. But there's a whole lot to unpack here in terms of how we got to this point. Yeah. yeah and one of the things I wanted to ask too is, is because, and it kind of tails up on what Craig said is, is, is why now? Because what we've been been hearing and we've heard it from Morello himself is that, well, we're going to get to the auction and, and then we'll see where we go from there. Is it, be, 
a big push by the board of governors? Is it the PA? I guess why now instead of waiting to the auction? Do you know, get a sense of where that push is coming from? Well, I think, again, the answer is the skepticism that exists of whether or not Alex Marowello can actually pull this off. Um, I think there's skepticism in league headquarters. I think there's skepticism with people who have boots on the ground in Arizona. Um, it's, it's one thing to want to do all these things. It's one thing to intend to do all these things and no one's questioning his intentions. It's, there's a long way between intentions and execution. And that's part of it. It's that even in a perfect world, you know, he delivers on every single aspect of what he says, and it happens all on the timeline that they've outlined. We're still talking about an October 2027 puck drop in what you call what would you call it North Scottsdale? I mean, that's that's a long ways off. And so I think there's that part of it. It's like, okay, what happens if we get to a year from now? The land auction is won, and we don't have steel and shovels in the ground and there's nine roadblocks that are in place between infrastructure, lawsuits, environmental stuff, whatever. I don't know all the details. Craig knows all that stuff way better than I ever could. But what happens if we got to a year from now and there's been no progress? Should we have just pulled the plug earlier? And so I think that's part of the questions that the league was beginning to ask. And then they ultimately got to a place, I believe, and no one has confirmed this, but I believe they ultimately got to a place of how can we make Alex Maruello happy so that we can all kind of, at least for the temporary short term, go our separate ways. Okay. I want to bring Mullet Arena into this discussion as well, Frank, because if, if you remember the original agreement, it was three plus one. They were going to play three years there with an option for a fourth. Pretty much everyone said at the time, yeah, they're going to be there four years. If, and it's a big if, they stay on the timeline that they projected. That adds only one more year to Mullet Arena. Do you believe maybe the just the entire opinion, maybe Marty Walsh's comments and and the ramped up rhetoric had any impact on them maybe changing their mind about the timeline of staying at Mullet? I don't think so. As much as Marty Walsh was sort of stamping his feet and and obviously put the Coyotes on blast, um, the truth is, outside of maybe you know, trying to make it something in the next CBA bargaining in 2026, they can say all they want, but they don't, the NHL players association, unfortunately for them, doesn't have any control in this process. It's sort of like the same complaints that we've heard about the mayor in Scottsdale. You know, it's great that you're barking, but unfortunately this isn't your jurisdiction. So like that, you know, you can say whatever you want, but you don't have any real control. And so I think a lot of you know, people on the inside had viewed it the same way. Um, and, and look, um, I think in, in atmosphere wise, the players, I think probably enjoyed at least the ones I've talked to the experience and especially some visiting players enjoyed the experience of playing in that type of environment. But I can also tell you that there's a whole lot of other coyotes players that I talked to that said, as, as nice as it is for what it is, it kind of feels like we're not even playing in the NHL. And that part of it, I think, uh, left some Coyotes players wanting more. You're right, Frank. And I think one of the things when we talk about mullet, I think it's fine if you play there once a year. You're an Eastern Conference guy. You're staying in Tempe. You're right by Old Town. Get a play really quick. It's fun. It's, and we're out. I, I think to play 41 home games in there year after year, it's daunting. And you look at some of those players that are at the end of their career going, I don't know if I want to end my career at Mullet. Now, having said that, I'm not sure how many of those players are super excited to be moving out of 85 degrees south um, south in, in Arizona to moving to Salt Lake City. It turns out it snows there. I hope they know that. Um, and I do think that that's serious. I, be careful what you wish for players and agents not playing in the Mullet because you're not potentially playing in the Mullet next year. And it doesn't mean it necessarily changes the scenario. Well, I think that's fair, by the way. And I think there's a ton of players that are really going to miss playing and living in Phoenix. Um, that said, I think there's going to be enough energy and excitement that exists around if this does indeed get across the finish line, because we're still dealing in a little bit of a hypothetical, that there's going to be players that are excited just as they were going to Seattle without any history, um, that they're in a spot where um, they might be excited for that. and. 
to be fair, it's not perfect to start in Salt Lake City. This arena is not oriented for hockey, and they're going to have some hiccups and challenges along the way. But I think this idea of a rebrand, new logo, new team name, new market, um, that part also just kind of changes the idea and specter that has existed fairly or unfairly around this team for a while that, you know, I'm not breaking any news when I say this to you guys, that there's a bit of a, you know, toxic reputation of this team and franchise as it's been run for the better part of the last 10 plus years. One of the things we want to ask you about um, is the report that was in your report today about this idea that, you know, Alex Morello would sell the team for a sale price of $1.2 billion, then that would include the $200 million relocation fee. But then this idea that then Alex Morello would get an expansion team back in a few years because Gary Bettman recently told the Hockey News, quote, whether it's $2 billion or $2.5 billion or $1.7 billion, I think that's the range I believe the owners would want to be in if we were going to consider expansion. So I'm just curious your thoughts on this idea that Morello sells the team but then gets an expansion team down the road when the expansion fee is looking like it's going up and up and up. I'd say that the answer there is wait and see. Um, I don't know what terms and conditions would be attached to that. I don't know what thresholds need to be met. I don't know if there's a purchase price or an expansion fee baked into an agreement like this. I don't know there's a lot of details still to be sorted out, um, on the expansion front and more than anything, before you can even talk about any of that stuff, it's, this is an expensive proposition, not just in terms of fees and and money exchanging hands, but just in terms of developing that space, you know, privately, like you're talking significant outlay of funds that, let's see if it all happens. And that's what the NHL is essentially saying. You make it happen and then we'll have a conversation. Okay. I want to ask you this with, with regard to the idea of the T the Lee coming back here in expansion, promising Alex Morello an expansion franchise or it being some part of this agreement. Yeah. I want to be clear, Craig, by the way, I don't know that there's an ironclad promise. I, I don't know that for sure. I think that's part of the discussion of, you know, you hit this, this, and this, and we will, have that conversation. I don't, I need more details. I want your thoughts on this. Why would the NHL return to Arizona with, you, you mentioned the toxic reputation of this franchise. You, you wipe it out by leaving. Why would you come back with the possibility of a blank slate, a chance to wash away all of the past missteps and ugliness of this franchise, and then choose an ownership group that has made so many mistakes along the way. We all remember the Katie Strang expose, the breakup with Glendale, the unpaid bills, Moving to Mullet Arena, the failed Tempe vote, and assortment of other minor issues like its social media strategy. Why would the NHL come back with the opportunity to pursue any group and say, yeah, you're the guys? I think it's a really fair question and one that I'd like to ask given the opportunity. Um, I think there's been even more hiccups that have occurred behind the scenes that frankly have never made it to public light um, that would just further damage the reputation. But I think overall franchise wise, and that's why I'm also really curious to see whether or not the name and image of this team is going to be preserved too, that it's there. It's this extends beyond Alex Marowello, to be fair. Um, this has, this reputation has been building and growing for a while, but to say to, to your point, to ask that question of because of the missteps to this point, why would you then get back in bed with this group after it seems like you're so desperately trying to get out now? Um, I don't know the answer to that, but I also think there's a healthy amount of go, go prove it. And then we can talk that it's not sort of baked in 100% guarantee you do this and you get a team. It's you got to do a bunch of these things and then we can have the conversation and we're open to it. So I'd be curious to see what those, what that agreement looks like. And this is more of a statement than a question, but it's kind of falling on those same lines with with the possibility of expansion. And we just saw it coming from, and, and I know you didn't particularly see this today yet, but the Arizona Coyotes themselves 
t- tweeted something about, <laughs> oh, the Arizona Coyotes committed to staying in the desert. And, and I think what the implication was, at least what we're taking is, is that it's talking about the future, not now, not 24, not 25, but 27, 28, 28, 29, 29, 30, that we're still going to have this logo, we're still going to have this team. But I think what might get lost here is they're not going to have Cooley. They're not going to have Doan. They're not going to have Keller. They're not going to have Ingram. They're not going to have all of these draft picks that they've got slated over the next three years of drafts. They don't have all the prospects in the pipeline. That's all gone. You might have the same jersey and the same logo, but, but an expansion team, buddy, you're starting over. Like, And, and I just I, and I don't know if that's getting lost here right now that we can talk about expansion and, oh, great, thanks, Morellos, for bringing us back a franchise. I, I don't know if the fan base is going to be lining up at that point. But, 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 but again, that, that this thought of expansion, I'm not sure that that's going to be the carrot that, that fools the, the locals here that, oh, well, we'll get a team back eventually. I'm not sure that that's what's going to, oh, we'll be right there for you, Mr. Morello, when you're back in five to seven to 10 years. I'm not sure. I, I think that's a fair question or a fair statement to make. I would also say, like, I've watched this happen in other markets. I know you guys ended up being on the receiving end of Winnipeg and we know how that played out, but they got the thrashers who were in such bad shape, who had never won a playoff game that needed rebuilding and got a new GM and a new head coach and all these things. No one really cared that it wasn't. And I know there's you know more time that had passed, but no one cared that Keith Kachuk wasn't returning with the jets for jets 2.0. It's, We just want hockey and I appreciate and understand all the emotional connection that you're talking about. Um, But to me, even over the course of a five year period of time, players come, players go. It's about the identity. It's about the brand. It's about, um, you know, the emotional root and connection that you have with your team that as I, you know, established off the top of our chat, like it's, it is real and it does exist. um, But not every team and with every player that comes through the door has that luxury that, Hey, you can put an ironclad stamp on it that Logan Cooley is still going to be a coyote in Arizona in 2029. Anyway, even if they were to stay. One thing we want to ask, um, I'm not sure if you've done the, the research on this because we haven't, but is Salt Lake city really a good market or is there a chance for a big payday with maybe some possible headaches waiting down the road? I'd say it's intrigued the NHL because it's one of the fastest growing markets in the U.S. It's affluent. There's a healthy injection of tech money uh, and people moving there. Um, It has a hockey history as a minor league hub, and there have been some really great players that have played there throughout the years, uh, particularly in the 80s. And I think there's also some curiosity, like kind of the way I look at Salt Lake city right now is I know the NHL isn't first cause the jazz are there, but the same thing happened in Nashville. They had the Titans in Nashville and then the NHL came in second and it really took off and the city just exploded with population with growth and I think the NHL is kind of hitting that right in the middle now with Salt Lake City uh, if this does end up happening because that same sort of growth is just, you know, popping off right now in Salt Lake City. Frank, one last thing I want to get a sense of, and, and, and I realize this is very fluid right now, but do you have a sense of the timeline for what to expect over the next couple weeks or the next month or so? I, I think... A, like a lot of in terms of reporting, the cat is is out of the bag. The Band-Aid has more or less been ripped off. I'll uh, be curious to see how specifically the NHL responds because if you look back to the reporting in 2011, it was the Globe and Mail that broke the story and the NHL refuted it then as speculation that the Thrashers were moving to Winnipeg And 11 days later, there was Gary Bettman at a podium in Winnipeg announcing it. And so uh, I don't know if they're going to take a different path. I think to this point, at least from what I've seen, and it's all kind of happened rapidly here in the last half hour, that they did say something publicly about not commenting. Um, Obviously, a lot's been going back and forth. But in terms of timeline, if they are not as far down the track as I believe they are, based on my reporting, I wouldn't be shocked to see something um, as soon as the day after the Coyotes play their last 
home game regular season wise at mullet arena and whether that happens or not you know i don't know i can't put a guarantee on that but what i can say is that unlike atlanta to winnipeg between now and may 31st is a long time off and so they've got some runway here to do what they need well, Frank, we can't thank you enough for taking some time um, to join us today and talking this through with us. And I'm sure we'll be in touch in the coming days and weeks as this story evolves. But thank you again for for sharing your insight. Yeah, wish it was under different circumstances. Uh, wish you guys all the best. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, I'm glad that we could talk this through. Frank, really appreciate yeah, the time. Appreciate it, Frank. Thanks. Thank you again to uh, Frank Saravalli of Daily Face Off for joining us. I know you know, we, this fan base and him haven't always seen eye to eye, but today he's kind of been at the forefront of this story. So we really do appreciate yeah, and, his time and, and today. I'll, like I said before, I'm going to be honest. Like th This is Frank's reporting. Like with Frank's the one that, and I said, if he's getting this stuff, I'm giving him flowers. I'm giving him flowers. Like this is, and again, it, but, but I want to be really clear on one, one thing that Frank said too, and 99.5% and or 95% isn't moved yet. And, and I know I, people can say out there, oh, you're PD, you're an idiot. But, but I'll tell you this. PD was in the locker room in 2004, and we were told to look for properties in Portland. I was told as an employee, we're moving. The announcement will be tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. I was told that. But I'm not making that up. I was there. I was told that we were moving. Uh, Steve Elman flies to, L to L.A., meets with Wayne Gretzky, and literally at midnight, saved the day. And they did not move. Um, I, 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 I don't think this looks good. I'll, yeah. I'll be sincerely honest. I think this is getting going down a path that, that it's, hasn't been down in a very long time. But, but I won't say it's over yeah. uh, until it's announced that it's over. Your point is important, too, because you, you need to look at history, right? We, we, and we've been around for all of it. We remember the Portland one. Mark Chipman has been very vocal about Well, he, he told the story about how he was in Gary Bettman's office and he thought he had the Coyotes coming back to Winnipeg. And by the time he got to the tunnel, Gary was on the phone with him saying, sorry, I got what I wanted in Arizona. You're not getting him after all. We saw Seattle thinking they had the team coming. This has played out before. And again, I am not saying it's not happening now. And when you, when you consider how many times they've been trying to do this and failed at it, it probably ramps up the possibility that they finally said, uncle, but keep all of that in mind. It's, it's, it's not over yet there. As Frank has reported, as Elliot Friedman, who will join us shortly, has also reported, there's still a lot to work out from a legal standpoint, from a contractual standpoint. This is not a done deal yet. They're still working on it. Yeah, but, but I also want to make sure the people listening aren't sitting there going, oh, there's Craig Petey and Lee with their pom-poms again. I, I, that we're not. We're not saying this it's is just the reality of the situation. This is real. Yeah. This is as close as you can possibly be to this happening. But until the contracts are signed, and one of the things I go back to is when Morello told us, and I said, I told you, I just happened to be an earshot. I don't think he even, I think he looked through me, but he, but he said <laughs> that he was talking about this being personal and that he wants to keep this team and I'm going to get this done. And I, he said all of those things. And I'm wondering as this progresses over the next coming days and weeks that he goes, you know what? Maybe I'm wrong here. Maybe waiting three, four, five years and losing all of these. Gosh, I oh, I, I lose Bill Armstrong. I lose all of the stuff that I had built up here. The 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 staff, the employees, the players, the 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 pipeline. Oh, maybe this isn't a great idea. And it's going to cost me 1.7 billion dollars. I mean, there's again, maybe just maybe there's some reflection on his part and maybe not maybe it takes a 600 million dollars in runs I, yeah I don't we don't know. know we don't know all the details of i don't know the, his the motivation agreement. i don't know like, for, for sure I, I agree with you like and from a fan standpoint we mentioned this before and this is this is i don't want to ignore this in fact i want to keep emphasizing this magnifying this because this is having a major impact on the fan base who has been through they've been through so much already right how many starts and stops have we seen with this franchise in the past too many to count we yes we've seen a, a lot of bad ownership and bad management and lack of resources over the years. Well, they finally seemed to get the hockey ops side right. They were going to do a rebuild the right way. They were going to build for sustainable success for a very long time. And now you're pulling the rug out from under them on that. And you're saying, OK, yeah, maybe in four five, six years, we're going to start over again. So good luck on thinking about any kind of winning until the mid 2030s. Does that sound appealing to anyone? No. Look, we may get to the mid 2030s and the people there may not care because fans are very fickle and they they, they will <laughs> yeah. get over things very fast. Yeah. But that's a long time to wait for any kind of meaningful success 
and and we don't even know if it's going to happen. So that's it's, a really tough pill. Especially when we're this close. Yeah. And we've talked about the rebuild. And we've talked about Cooley and Gunther and Doan. And we've talked about how close they're getting. Yep. And I think that's, for me, is the frustration. You've, you're finally there. We've waded through this horrific rebuild where you sucked. And now you're coming at us and going, oh, by the way, we're leaving. But hey, the good news, we'll see you in seven years with all new players that we didn't draft. You don't know. And we're going to start over. But we, but please buy our merchandise and yeah. our tickets. And by the way, we won't benefit from the expansion process the way Vegas did because everybody's wise to it now. So it'll be a long rebuild. Yeah. <laughs> Seattle made the playoffs the first year. But yeah, if year. if Alex Morello makes a six hundred million dollar profit on this team. He owes that to Coyotes fans for years of emotional damages. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and say that right now. We got a lot of super chats here. There are a lot of people who have put up to 27, 28 years of yeah. emotion, money, time, commitment to this team. And this is such a slap in the face to all of these people. And Frank said it. This is the best and most loyal fan base in the entire National Hockey League. Hockey in Arizona doesn't make sense, okay? Like, there's no frozen ponds here. It's not it, It's not a given. So you have to work a little bit harder to make it work here. And the people who want it to work, work extremely hard to make it work. They care more than anybody else can possibly care. And fans do not deserve this treatment. Fans do not deserve this potential outcome. It is so wrong. And not just the fans, the staff, the staff members who have been here from the very beginning, the staff members who have been here for years, the players... You know, yes, these are, I think you said it in an interview this week, like, yes, they're NHL players, but these are people with lives, with families, people who have homes, people who have kids and what, like, this is, this does not just impact a billionaire and his business. This impacts so many people. And I hate that that's overlooked. And I'm sure there's so many trolls in, in the chat and online who are just, oh, ha ha, like, move the team. It's totally finally up, over. Yeah. When you're trolling this situation, you're trolling the 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 emotional commitment of real human beings for and and that that like that just hits to the core of people and it's so mean and it's so unfair so just think about that next time you want to go send an anonymous tweet on twitter or in this chat right now that these are real people's lives affected yeah and there is uh, on that on that note and i i don't care that anybody knows in the organization yeah i reached out to a lot of people within the organization on all levels. And there's a lot of anger right now. There's a lot of sadness. There've been a lot of tears today, frustration. And you know, one of the most frustrating parts of it is the Alex Morella ownership group has not told anybody a thing about what's going on. Still, we've been, we keep hearing about these meetings that they're going to have with the players, with the staff to inform what's none of that's happened. They're in the dark. They're finding out from media sources rather than from their own owners. And that's wrong. That is just, I'm just going to say it, frankly, that is poor leadership. Part of leadership is having a direction and, and and achieving goals, I get, on the business side. The other half of leadership is the human side. And quite frankly, the Morello Ownership Group has sucked at that side for most of the time that they've been there. You need to deal with your people. You need to connect with your people. Let them know what's going on. And they just feel so tone deaf all the time. The latest tweet is the latest <laughs> example of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I think we should go to the tweet first, and then I have a, a okay. similar chat. This is a this came out, and, and I'm not to Craig's point. I worked there for a long time. I worked for this organization for 23 years. I've been through coaches and ownerships and management and players galore. I, I've been through this. I've lived this. This is important to me. My son was born and learned how to skate as, as with a Coyotes jersey on. This is important to me. This goes way beyond sport. This is family to me. This is important. And, and when I took phone calls today, just like Craig did, I talked to a lot of members of the staff today. And they're asking me for information. PD, what do you know? PD, what's <laughs> going on? And I asked, haven't you heard from anybody internally? And the answer was no. To Craig's point, I... I I, I've been through these things. I've been called into team meetings by the president. And hey, I'll, I'll be honest. The president didn't, didn't always give us the true, true, true picture. I get it. We understand that. But they tried and they right. talked to us. To not talk to them, terrific. This <laughs> goes beyond that. One o'clock this afternoon, and I think I have the time right. One o'clock this afternoon. One o'clock. And everybody's seen the news. Everybody's a hockey fan across North America has seen this. Yeah. This team, the Arizona Coyotes, tweets this out from their account, committed to keeping Coyotes hockey in the desert and building an arena in Phoenix. Are you out of your mind? 
Do you think that that's the fair message to give your staff, your players, your fan base right now when they're reading over and over again that the team is leaving right now? Yeah. And your message is, hey, we're committed to it. I, I saw Javier on every local news station over the last five days, every single one saying we're committed. We're going to get this building. We're going to build a building in the desert. You know what we didn't hear from Javier today? Anything. Yeah. The team has not commented. Not Obviously, commented. the league is com hasn't commented. But No comment. Yeah. No comment. Uh, no comment? Really? That's your comment? Your yeah. comment is, oh, we're working. Yeah. I don't... I'm sorry. And I'm going to go... Uh, listen, I, I want people to understand that part of this process, like now that the league is involved, probably means that there's a gag order on the team that they can't say okay, anything fair. about. I get that. So do they owe the media a statement? Probably, probably not. not. Do they owe their employees something? you damn they right they do. And ago, they've, been, Craig. they've been they've been owing them that for a they very said long a month, time. We're going to talk to you and fill you in on what's yep. going on. Yep. And lastly... This is the other one, and I know people can say what they want, and, and I, I'm not a reporter. I don't have quotes. I, I don't ask people because I lived it. I was at the Morello dinner at Salt Lake River Field. We went to the baseball park as a group. We went there as a family. We went there with my friends, and he got up there. Mr. Alex Morello Sr. got up there with a microphone, and he said to the group, he said, he said, this is about family, and you guys are all part of my family now. This is family. He told that to me. My son was a teenager at the time, and he went up to the, a billionaire owner of the team. At that time, my son went up to him and thanked him. He Nervous as hell, he said, Dad, can I go say something to him? I said, absolutely. My son went up to him and said, thank you so much. Our family's been through so much. Thank you for doing this. We, we want to be a part of this family. That's the last time I felt like that. Mm. It's a pretty, and, pretty dysfunctional family if you're not even Up until the day I left. <laughs> And, and 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 someday over the summer, I'll get to tell the story about how I left, because I think that is part and parcel to what this discussion is. So I know what it's like inside there. And I, I agree with Leah, the trolls, the laughing and the, and the hey, hey, we told you in Arizona. Bullshit. I'm telling you that the players like it here. The players like to golf here. The players like the sunshine here. The players like the fans here. This is not something that everybody's jumping up and down. Hey, we can't wait for five years. Yeah, I'm sorry. They're just not. I want to stay in this a little longer. Sorry. But, you know, with with all the people that I've talked to, there's there's been so much talk about how this is wrong for the players. Right. You'll hear all the agents saying, oh, playing at Mullet Arena, the, the facilities. I get a little frustrated with that angle of it, too. I get it. I get it. Every other player in the NHL is playing in different facilities than the Coyotes are right now. They're not playing in a 4,600 seat arena. Obviously, they're not having to walk across a parking lot to get to their training facility from their their practice rake. Things like that don't exist anywhere else in the NHL. But I want all the agents and players who are thinking about that and maybe only thinking about themselves to think about the people who might actually be losing their jobs now or might have to uproot just like you. And it's not as easy for them because they don't have team services helping them every step of the way. This is having an impact on so many people around this team. So when you just casually say, yeah, we can't be at Mullet Arena, did you think about all the repercussions of that? And I'm not saying it's right or wrong to do what they're doing. I get that we're at a frustration point. But just get out of your own headspace once in a while and try and imagine the impact that this is having on so many other people people. But Craig, we talked about the, the agents and the PA and the influence they had by saying this stinks. Our players don't want to play in the mullet. And that's fair. Correct. That I think that it has some bearing on what we're talking about today is, is that the agents said, well, the players were complaining. Well, guess what players uh, careful what you wish for, because I don't think there are too many players jumping up and down right now going, Oh shit. No, they're we, not. We, we, we can wait. Let's just go ahead and say it. Yeah. Players, players aren't, aren't excited about moving to Salt Lake city. I'm just going to put that out there. Yeah. I know that. They're or not fact. excited about it. There, there are there are people that have homes and families and lives, and, and now they're going. Oh gosh, maybe mullet wasn't that bad. Maybe, maybe wait. Whoa, whoa. Maybe mullet's not bad. So all the players that may not be listening, I know the Vancouver Canucks they have a game tonight. But if you, but if you are a player of the Arizona Coyotes and you are watching this right now, call your agent, call the PA, and say, hey, no, this isn't. We're fine with mullet. Everything's fine. Get the get the pushback going from the people that can actually make a difference. Call your agent. Call the PA. I know it might be too late. And maybe they're packing the U-Hauls right now. But but your voices were heard when the complaints were there. Maybe your voices will be heard now and, and can maybe stop this thing in the in the eleventh hour, just like Wayne Gretzky did back in two thousand four. All right. Well, before Elliot Friedman joins us shortly, I want to make sure we read through some of these super chats. Thank you so much for for the super chats. And again, if you are watching this, please 
hit the thumbs up on this video. Um, the first one comes from the Extra Shift podcast who says, Hey, Leah, Steve, and Craig, so sorry. You've all got to go through this again. Still hope this can all be resolved positively for what is a good market with amazing fans that deserve so much better. Appreciate that. Thank you. Mm. Uh, next one comes from Faisal who said, I imagine the bigger issue in four years would be how that team in Salt Lake is doing if they suck people aren't going to care as much if they are going to the finals it's going to really hurt I yeah there's a lot to be discussed about how Coyotes fans current Coyotes fans would feel about the relocated team which we can talk more about a little bit later um Jamie Eisner friend <laughs> from old friend um said this is complicated a fresh start seems promising Yotes have been playing paying crippling interest on sins of the past since 2009 but relocating only guarantees this team's this team leaves not that one will come back amen to that very yeah, well I'm, said I'm not I'm um, the, the 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 side of this that I'm not convinced about is at all is Oh, they'll come back in expansion. I keep hearing that narrative. Oh, they'll be back. They love this market. It's a long process and there's a lot to work through. I'm convinced it's it's going to happen anytime soon. I know people are floating like four or five years. I'm not convinced. Okay. One thing we were talking about Salt Lake City too. I want to throw this out there too because Google's my friend. <laughs> the, the Salt Lake City population in the surrounding areas, 1.2 million. Phoenix, 4.9. I know that I didn't go to a prep school like Craig, but that seems to be a disparaging amount of people. That's a lot more people here in the Valley than are in Salt Lake, right? Yeah. It's a new car, shiny new car. Everybody's going to love it. Ask how they're doing in Winnipeg. Yeah. And that's a team that's winning. They're not going. Again, we'll see. I, I just, I, I, I want Salt Lake City to have a team. That'll be great. Have a team. Just don't have this team. <laughs> <laughs> um, super chat from Tony. Thanks so much for the generous super chat. Says at PHNX Sports, especially Leah, Craig, and PD. I feel for you and won't stop supporting or appreciating your cover coverage. No matter what happens, keep up the great work in covering the Yotes and hockey. Love you guys. Thank you, Tony. Um, this next one from Dawson. Keep your head up, guys. Just like the 2012 playoff run, hockey the hard way, baby. If it doesn't work out, <laughs> remember what this franchise gave us in the memories. Yes, there's a lot of memories for sure. Shelby said to the fan base, to the PHNX crew, we deserve better from ownership. And thank you for always having our back. I really hope we get these pods next season. It's been a real highlight all season. Thank you, Shelby. Appreciate that. Um, Faisal said, if Coyotes announce they move, guarantee they win the expansion draft yeah. this year or yeah, the draft lottery. The draft lottery. We've yeah. already said that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a lock it's at it's this lock. point. Lock it. <laughs> cruel. Yeah, yeah that, cruel that fit. Just, that would be. Twisting the knife. Yeah. Salt, salt the wound. wound yep. Whatever phrase you want to say. Um, mm. This one from Short Stack Goblin. I remember my dad telling me when they announced the move to Glendale instead of Scottsdale, well, that's the end of the Coyotes. Sad to say he's right. Maybe like 20 years later. But, but you know what, <laughs> Leah? And we've talked about the history of this. We've done this in, in this show. We've had other shows that talked about this, the history. The truth is, that is the beginning of the end. Steve Elman, we can talk about Morello's and what's going on now. Steve Elman was the beginning of the end of this franchise. When that franchise moved from Scottsdale and North Tempe, exactly where this building should be, and he moved it to Glendale for a cheaper piece of land where he could build a real estate development, that was the beginning of the end. And it's been nothing but a shit show disaster since that day. And I, and I think if you want to put blame, you can go all the way back to Steve Elman. And, and I, I really believe that's where this thing's got to inspire a lot of control. Do I believe that a, a fresh start, a clean start would be great? I do, but I don't want to wait five years for it. I, I don't. I don't think this fan base wants to wait either. Yeah, I, th I think, yeah, when, when you talk about like the Winnipeg situ situation that Frank mentioned, I don't know that there's another comparable to Arizona when it comes to this situation because they've been suffering for more than a quarter century. I mean, there, there've been very few bright spots in the history of this franchise. There's been so much ownership change, so much turmoil, so much arena uncertainty, really uncertainty about staying in the market to tell them, yeah, you know, not only wait five, six years for another team, but then wait five more years beyond that before you can start winning. I, you, you saw the sentiments. There were a lot of fans popping off today and, and I understand it. I understand their anger, their frustration, Again, I don't know what will come in 2035. If a team is here and they're winning, people may forget about it really quickly. But it, it's going to take a lot of healing for this fan base because they've just been jobbed over and over and over again. It's funny because when you talk about different teams and the wait period, um, Winnipeg, 15 years. Um, 
It's been 15 years since Atlanta lost a team. They're now starting mm-hmm. to talk about Atlanta again. Quebec's been over 30 years since they've lost a team. They built an arena and they're still waiting. Kansas City built an arena. They're not coming. Yeah. Um, Minnesota, I go back, is the only one that's going to be potentially comparable. Except Minnesota's a really, 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 really good hockey market. And it took them four years. I, I just want to be very cautious that you say, well, Coyotes will get an expansion team. Arizona's going to be up next for expansion. That doesn't mean they're going to be here next year or the year after or the year after. There's no guarantee it's in five years. There's no guarantee it's in seven. Because the one thing that this is hurting this team now is there is no arena to play in. And until somebody can commit to building an arena without a team yeah. in the hopes of paying $1.7 to $2.3 billion to put a team in it, Man, I, I don't want to sit there and root for that kind of a future right now. I, I would sit and, and play hockey the hard way and scratch it and claw and try to keep the team we have. And I know that it's 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 dark and it's dim and it's it's not looking positive for these fans right now. But but I'm, I'm going to say it again. I'm not giving up hope until Gary Bettman's at a podium in Salt Lake City announcing the new team. I'm just not. I want to talk. You mentioned Steve Elman, and when you start thinking about the string of ownership groups in in this franchise's history and the issue they've had on that front. Um, I, re- I remember Paula Bovin writing a column, I don't know how many years ago, saying the issue with this franchise has always been ownership stability. It still is. It still is. So when, when, when you're talking about coming back in expansion, and I want to go back to a point I made to Frank earlier. If you're looking for stable ownership, if you're looking for a group that isn't going to make this, these missteps, aren't you looking elsewhere? Aren't, don't you have to look elsewhere? Can you really come back to this market and sell them on the idea that Alex Morello is going to be the guy, the savior, when expansion returns. I just, I, I have a really hard time buying that. I just keep coming back to that. Um, this is just such a difficult day for uh, the fan base, the staff, the players. Um, and it's just very unfortunate that we have to be doing this right now when we should just be talking about the fourth to last game of the season, the Vancouver no, Canucks. Breaking down that big Vancouver matchups. Spin Spinning the tankathon again. Yeah, yeah, doing the tankathon. Why would I spin a tankathon yeah. if I don't know the team's going to be here? Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, <laughs> well, well, there's still a lot to talk about, but we will get ready to welcome in our next guest making his second appearance on the show from Sportsnet, NHL insider Elliot Friedman. Elliot, welcome back to the show, and thank you so much for joining us on such short notice today. No problem, and I know it's a tough day for you guys, so uh, sorry to hear. Elliot, why don't you just give us the lay of the land, the latest things. We'll, we'll just start there. What are you hearing? Well, I, I think this is moving in a, in a direction. There's there's no question about that, and and the re, everybody's trying to be careful because there's a lot of work that needs to get done. And in the in the world of where things like this occur, until the lawyers sign off on everything, nothing is done until it's done. So, <clears throat> but I think they're basically working around the clock to try to get this done by next week. I think there's a real desire to get to have it put together before the players break off. Um, and go their separate ways. Uh, I do think that's a very big part of this equation. I think also that they want to get it over with so that you know people can have some certainty um, about where where there's where this is going and what the answers are going to be for the future and for people's own careers, uh, not necessarily players, but people you know uh, who have regular who do regular work inside the Coyotes organization, but. We're moving in this direction, and everybody's trying to see if it can happen and get it done, and we'll see where we are next Thursday. What could still derail this? Um, well, I mean, anything. I mean, I, it sounds like a lot of, based on what I heard about the memo that was sent around today, it sounds like a lot of this has kind of been put together, but you just never know. I mean, like the one thing I, I learn about these things, Craig, is that people don't like it when they become public because, you know, there's been a uh, there's an emotional reaction from the, the true hardcore Coyotes fans. I've seen some of it online today. And, you know, I, I always am careful. You don't allow what you see online to make you think it's a true shape of people's reactions. But there's a lot of emotion. And I think sometimes when this stuff gets out, whether people feel pressure or people get affected by the reaction of it, it can affect the way that they go about getting things done or how they feel about going out and getting things done. I really do feel, though, that this is pretty far down the road. 
I don't think that the memo and information that would have would have been sent out today as it was without everybody feeling uh, relatively secure that it was going to happen. But the one thing people always say is that you never know how public reaction can affect something like this. But I I think it's much more likely than not that it gets done. When when and I'm just speaking from what we hear at, at PHNX is when did this turn? And, and, and I mean that everything we've heard from Javier Gutierrez, from Alex Morello Sr., from the Coyotes organization has all been positive. We're, at, we're going to make it to this June 27th auction. We reached out to, to Bill Daly and Gary Bettman, and it kind of got the inference that they were also going to wait for this auction, and we'll wait and see what happens. And then all of a sudden, literally within the next 48 to 72 hours, this has completely changed. What, what happened? You know, Steve, I think it's been on and off for a lot of the last few months. Uh, I I really do. Um, like, you know, there was a lot of noise. I think the last time I was on was just around the All-Star break. Um, there was a lot of noise back then, and it kind of calmed down and went away. And then a couple weeks after the, <laughs> the All-Star break, um, I I was hearing a lot of noise again that this was going to get done, that there, there was going to be a move. And then... You know, a couple of people said to me, uh, I think it was it was right before the trade deadline. It was right before the uh, the the uh, it was right before Batman went the met with the media at the uh, sorry right at, it was excuse me it was right before Batman met with the media at the GM meetings. I was hearing a lot of this is coming again that it's it's coming and then they kind of got the and that was when we weren't sure yet about the date for the here for the auction. I was hearing it a lot. And then the date came out and it kind of calmed down again. And then I would say within the last week to two weeks, there started to be a lot of noise, Steve. So I think the best way I can answer it is it kind of went like that. There were uh, there were times when it looked like they were going to wait and there were times when it looked like something was going to change. I think there was a lot of pressure from the Players Association. I think there was a lot of pressure from the other owners. And to be honest, I, I think, Steve, when it was kind of realized that, you know, they might have to stay in mullet for three more years anyway, I just think there was a lot of pushback. And I think even the NHL just said, you know what, um, we, can't, we can't do this for three more years. And I think it picked up a lot in the last week or two. What do you think of this notion? And you had it in your article as well, um, that Morello is getting paid a billion for the team and Smith is paying one point two billion. But then there's this potential promise that Morello then would receive an expansion team to return to this market years down the line. What have you heard on that? Well, what I what I'm hearing there, Leah, is that like my, this, what someone said to me is it's a billion for the team. And the league is brokering this. Like Morello and Smith are not talking to each other. This is all going through the NHL. Um, so the I believe Morello is going to be paid a billion dollars for the team, and I believe Smith is going to pay. I've seen some reports of one point three, so it's possible my number could be wrong. But I heard one point two to buy the team officially from Morello slash the NHL. However, it's going to work. Now I also reported from what I've heard, there's a five year window in there for Morello to um, pr to come up with an expansion team where he sort of gets, I don't know exactly what they're calling it, but from what I hear, I would describe it as an exclusive window where he can bring a team into Arizona, back into the market. Now, from what I understand, there are some parts, there's some things that are in there that he's going to have to achieve. Like, it's not just like he can say, I want to bring a team back. There's things he's going to have to do that includes building the arena. And the NHL, of course, maintains all final approvals for that. So I, I think it's pretty much scripted how he would have to go about it. But from what I understand, there is going to be a five-year window unless it changes. Now, I think that that is happening for a couple of reasons. I think, number one, um, they want this to happen as smoothly as possible. They do not want to end up in court with Morello, so that helps against this. And the other thing, guys, is I don't believe at this time there was another local option in Arizona that they uh, either f could consider for either it was something that could happen quickly or for legal reasons with Morello. I just don't think they saw another option that they could put on the table so he gets that window. 
And, I, and still, even if you do that, you're still looking at Mullet Arena. I mean, even if there was another owner tomorrow you don't have that arena, could pick yeah. up the pieces, you yeah. have a place to play. And I think ultimately that's one of the issues that this ownership has, group has faced since they moved into Tempe. Yeah, I've, I've heard the same thing about local ownership groups. I, I want to ask you, though, following up on the idea of this franchise coming back, the whatever 2.0 of the Arizona Coyotes coming back yeah. and Alex Morello being the owner again. When you have that sort of blank slate to come back in expansion, and 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 I asked this of Frank as well, and wash away all the filth of the past from this franchise, why would you come back to an ownership group that has made so many mistakes in the past in its tenure here? Well, first of all, I think you guys are much closer, <coughs> much closer to the situation than I am, so I would defer to your opinion on Morello being the face. I just think. Honestly, Craig, I think the NHL wants to do this as quickly as possible and as painlessly as possible. And, I, you know, I mean, nobody – like, I don't know Alex Morello or his ownership as well as the three of you do. I would concede that right away, but I can tell you what I've heard, and that is that he's a fighter, and if they want this to go uh, as quickly as possible, you're going to have to make sure that he's not going to be in a position or doesn't want to be in a position where he can go out and make this difficult. So I think that's what this is all about. It's Alex Morello, from what I've heard, he clearly wants to prove that he can do this. There's a lot of people who say that he can't do it. So what they're going to do is they're going to give him the window to do it, and that is to prove that he can win the auction. Like, and, and again, I think it's important to note here, we haven't seen the final agreement yet, but I have heard there are pr provisions or protections or whatever you want to call it in there that says we're not just giving you a blank slate over five years to be the next owner of Coyotes 2.0. You have to, there are things you're going to have to accomplish. And I think that's probably going to be spelled out in there. And if he can't accomplish those things, then it, it won't matter what the window is. Historically speaking, Elliot, how extraordinary is it that we got to this point? We know the history of reloc relocation in the NHL, and it just, other than, you know, the, the Atlanta to Winnipeg one, it's the only time it's happened this millennium. How how yeah. extraordinary do these circumstances have to be to us for us to get to this point? Well, basically, there you have to be at the end. Like, I, I remember with the Atlanta-Winnipeg one, they were at the end. They... The, you know, the Atlanta ownership was crumbling. They didn't have anybody locally who wanted to own the team. They didn't see a lot of hope there or any hope there. So they went and they moved. And unfortunately, that's kind of where we are now. There is someone who wants to own the team. Um, but the arena situation being what it is, um, basically, you, you know what happens, Craig? It's that the, the commissioner, he, he's not afraid of fighting battles. But sometimes you've got to realize when your battle is temporarily lost. And he won't give up on the Arizona market. He won't. I don't think he ever will. He thinks very highly of it and has fought for it. But you've got the players upset. You've got your other owners upset. And you've got, even if they win the auction, uh, by their own organization's own words, three more years before they can play anywhere but Mullet Arena. And I just don't. I just think the commissioner realizes you get to a point where you can't have that anymore. That the time has come, and so I think you only see it, Craig, when the time has come. And unfortunately, it's it, for Air Coyotes fans right now. The time has come. Yeah, and we've seen it in other North American sports. I'm not going to say that this is unique to hockey, but does it does it damage the credibility of a league, or does it concern other owners when they see? Oof! If I get to this point, I, I mean. I might lose my team. They might move my team. Or is this just such an extreme example that you throw all that out the window? It's B. It's an extreme example. I, I don't think anybody – you wouldn't see the other owners being upset if Arizona was in quote-unquote a normal situation. Like I, like nobody like, – like, like I'll be honest. Nobody says anything bad to me about Arizona as a market. Um, and look, like <clears throat> you guys are the, – the sad thing is is – you know, you're making a real impact with the players you're turning out. You know, Austin Matthews, Matthew Nyes, like, you You know, Arizona hockey is making an impact on the league. And I think that's going to be very important for the NHL to continue. I think it's just simply the situation, Craig. I, it's got to a point where, you know, nobody nobody wants to see it anymore. And if there was, if there was a true path out of it, I, we wouldn't be here today. But right now, there's not a true path out of it. 
What is your gut telling you as far as, or your sources, as far as the likely lo- the likelihood, excuse me, of this happening, number one, and then number two, what would the timeline look like from what you've heard? Um, uh, well, Leah, I guess it was Frank, did Frank say 90 to 95? Um, I think was, he was on just now and he said that I, I hate guesstimating because usually it ends up very badly for me, but I think it's, it's very high. It's, it's, I, I would say he's probably right about that. You know, like I said, I, I think there is, you know, I had a couple people tell me today that they really want to speak to the players in particular before they leave. And so since the last game is on Wednesday, you know, players are going to be able to leave as soon as Thursday. And I think one is tied in with the other. I think they they really want to do this as soon as possible. So I think it's very high. I know there's a ton of work being done on it. The, uh, the NBA Board of Governors meetings were just held in New York, and Ryan Smith was there. And I wouldn't be surprised if he met or talked to Batman. Uh, at the same time, that's where they first met a couple of years ago was after an NBA board of governors meeting in New York city. So there's a history there. Um, you know, I just have to say like the, the, the people I think who are closest to it are basically saying we're working 24 seven to try to get this done. So it's, it's going to be quick. I want to ask you about salt Lake. Um, I read the, the athletic piece that Ian Mendez wrote today. And, and you know, when, when you go to a new market, there's there's this glowing portrayal of a new market and all the advantages and all the good things happening. Is Salt Lake City a good market for the NHL? It's obviously a much smaller market than the mm-hmm. Phoenix area is. Is this a good market or is this could this be could this become a problem down the road? I don't think they're worried about it being a problem. Uh, I, I think that, you know, when 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 i first reported a few years ago that ryan smith was was on the nhl's radar it was because people wanted him in the league they wanted it out there that he'd met with batman and they wanted him in the league and nothing that has happened has since then has changed my opinion of that um you know i don't know salt lake city very well but i've i you know i've heard it's it's pretty booming area um it's a wealthy area they love their sports um, they're getting a new arena as part of the uh, Winter Olympics. Um, you know, they're, I've heard nothing bad about Salt Lake City as an area, and I've heard a lot of greatness, uh, great things about Ryan Smith as an owner. Like, they want him in the league. And so I, I don't – like, I think that Smith always wanted an expansion team, but sometimes circumstances change, Craig, and this is one situation where circumstances changed. All right, Elliot, uh, thank you for, again, once, as Leah said, thanks for doing this on short notice. I think I texted you like two hours ago. So thank no, you for jumping okay. on the show. <laughs> you know, I, I know it's a tough day. Like, I, I know that you guys love the Coyotes, and I know there's a, a hardcore fan base there that, that loves the Coyotes. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I really don't know what to say. I, I, I don't. I, uh, it's really tough. I understand. And, you know, I, I think the really the toughest thing is, and it's kind of like the question that uh, – uh, I can't remember which one of you asked me. I think it I think it might have been you, Steve, is that it really came almost out of nowhere. Like you were almost lulled into a sense of complacency that we were going to wait until June 27th. So when this comes up, it really smacks you hard. So I understand how everybody there feels, and I wish I had something better I could tell you. But, uh, you know, hopefully, um, you know, hopefully in the long run, uh, Arizona hockey comes out for the better. Well, Elliot, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time, and we'll catch up soon, I'm sure. All right, guys. Take care. All right. See you, Elliot. Bye. Well, thank you again to Elliot Friedman for carving out some time in his day to join us and uh, kind of paint, help us paint the picture of where things stand, which where things stand does not seem to be great. (laughs) It's 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 no surprise to us at this point. What day is this? And I'm not being funny. Wednesday, April 10th. Wednesday, yeah. We weren't filming this on Monday. We weren't. Like we were as soon as the auction date got set, we sat here and did an emerge pod. Twenty seventh of June, just hang in there. We just gotta make the we just gotta win the auction or just gotta bring his checkbook. Whoops. And and I I feel almost maybe I mean just I feel hoodwinked. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I feel lied to and I'm and I'm upset about it. Yeah, because I, I think we we stood there and we stood up for this ownership ship group and we stood up for this management group with with other media members. We did. And we said, no, that's not what we're hearing. Mm. It's too bad we weren't hearing the truth, though. 
Yeah, well, it's, and I it's, don't expect them to, Craig. I, they don't. They can't. No, and listen, that and that's why you have to go outside the, the team too. Right. I, I right. wasn't just relying on team sources to tell me this. I, I, obviously, I was talking to the For league sure. as well. Um, it, yeah, it just sometimes you have different sources. I don't, I don't have a lot of people on the board of governors that I can reach out to, yeah. and those are those are people that know. And sometimes the league isn't going to be entirely forthcoming, especially in situations like this. As as both Elliot and Frank mentioned, the same thing happened with Atlanta and Winnipeg. They were telling people one thing and then another thing happened. They were Within doing things days. behind the scenes. And we listen, we knew all along they were going to be planning for contingencies. You sure. have to. That's just smart business. It was just, were they really, was that really plan A instead of plan B? We were always told that was plan B. And Gary had always been true to his word in the past because he wanted a team here. But as Elliot said, you eventually you reach a point where you're, you're at the end. There just isn't a viable path forward. And apparently that's what the league believes the situation is right now. Think- Craig, do you really think this all comes down to the arena they're playing in? I think it's a big part of it, and I, and it's interesting, right? And I this this is why I asked: did, did the rhetoric of the NHLPA matter? Because this agreement was supposed to be for four years anyway. If it's one more year, who the hell cares? Like one more year is gonna—that's a deal killer. Yeah. I, I wonder about that, but there, there was a lot of rhetoric from the PA and, and it got the players riled up. Players yep. started going public with their comments about it. We saw it. Yep. I think it was an effective campaign to maybe help push this thing to the other side. Yeah. So we, and again, I, I cause I go back to it and if they're playing in at Gila river, job and come, whatever, and they're, they're playing in front of 7,000, 8,000 fans. Yeah. I don't know if we're there right now. I don't know if we're here talking about Salt Lake city. Well, and, and by the way, Delta Center seats, uh, as as the story in the oh, Athletics said, eleven thousand comfortably hockey fans. It's a thirty two year old building. Yep. It is far from ideal, and they're going to be in it for a long time yep. until they get the next arena built. That's why I was like, I, I, I I'm not trying to disparage Salt Lake no. City, and the, the league has obviously done a lot of research on it, and and on Ryan Smith, and that's the, that's the biggest piece right there. If you really believe in the owners ownership group that you're yep. going to, that's a big deal. Because if you have a good owner and stable ownership, they can make a lot of things happen. Look what Jeffrey Vinnick has done in Tampa. He turned that franchise around and they became a, a cup winner, a multiple cup winner. So that matters a lot. I, I believe in that piece. But it's not like Salt Lake City is an ideal market. Again, it's much smaller. And that arena. Hey, it's funny. I talked to somebody that's been in that arena. Today. I've been in it. I covered the NBA. Oh, I know exactly so what it looks they, like. They said to me, think of America West Arena in, in the amount of, of seats that are obstructed views, but older. Yeah. That's how it feels. It's, so, it's not a great venue by any stretch. So. Uh, again, I keep saying, be careful what you wish for. And so yeah. I, I'm frustrated by that point that, that the building made the difference. And, and hindsight clearly is 2020 now after we we came on the air when all this was really starting at PHNX. And one of the first things we did is we covered all the arena options here. We did. We went. We it was went, like one of our earliest shows yes. that we ever did was, I remember, Vetting Valley Venues was yep. the thumbnail title of the show. It was that like was really good, we did a tour of the Coliseum. It was one week in. <laughs> It was yeah. one week in. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And if we're at, and, and if this, and, and the, to get the Coliseum up and running was a horrific amount of money, it was ex- exorbitant. Yeah, they, were, they, they literally had to replace the foundation, if you remember. But there, were, there were major issues once we got You know what's going to be cheaper then? What? $1.7 billion to get an expansion franchise because I believe if they were there, I still believe we're not talking about it. You know, anything. and we were talking about the arena. Maybe did the arena tip the scales? I, I, I also have to wonder as the league dove into this auction process and the purchase of yeah. this land and all that had to be done. Did they have faith that this group could get it done? Maybe that the more and more they thought about it, the more and more they examined it. They said, hey, you know, what? Too, it, right? it didn't happen in Tempe. Um, yeah. There, As we've talked about previously, there was a deal on the table with ASU that they walked away from. So is it really going to happen with this group? Can we really count on this? I, I guess I just don't understand. I, I, I'll still say this. I don't understand why you don't let Alex get to the auction. Right. And then see if, as Javier Gutierrez told me in the story, we put shovels in the ground second quarter of 2025. Yes. Because if shovels go in the ground 2025, well, well, then you've started the construction of your arena. Why can't you wait one more year when you knew you were going to be in Mullet Arena for three years anyway? anyway. That's what I still yeah, can't figure out how we to. got there. Yeah. You're right. Because even if we went, to, even if the Tempe election goes a different way and they start building that building, that was a year for remediation. And they're not shovels in the ground yet. Yeah. Or, or, Potentially here in this summer, uh, again, this this was going to be in Mullet originally for four years to begin with. So, yeah. again, I'm not quite sure if it, it becomes more than just the arena. I, I, I'm starting to wonder now if it is more than just that. Let's read a couple more Super Chats that we have. Thank you again, everybody, for your Super Chats. Um, this one comes from 
C-M-U-Y-O-01. Um, as an Oakland A's fan, just want to show support mm-hmm. for my fellow small market brothers and sisters. Yeah, sorry. Hope someone makes the right call and hockey stays in Arizona. I, I feel you. Yeah. Feel you. Oakland A's. Anybody who's dealt with this, right? We've yeah. seen lo- relocation from multiple yeah. Canadian markets. And, and we never sit there and give joy to it. Hey, do we? No. no. I, think, I, I don't understand, I don't understand that. There's this something wrong with someone who does that, who gets joy I'm out sorry. of that. For the Oakland A's, sorry. Yeah, yeah, seriously, and all their fans. Horrific. Um, music to die for. Send us a super chat. I'll put big money that the party buying the Coyotes is the same outfit that ten that funded the Ted No campaign. <laughs> I like the conspiracy theory. Yeah, put the tinfoil hat on. <laughs> um, CWP, send us a super chat. Love y'all so much. Grateful for this community that we have. Me too. And that will never go away. Yeah. I just like I just have to say that I've, I've been doing a lot of reflecting today on just like what this team has brought me and us. Yeah, Saul Bookman is sitting next to us and is telling me that we're going to launch the PHNX Coy- Junior Coyote Show. <laughs> <laughs> I heard we're doing beer league hockey. That's what I heard. <laughs> Look out, the PHNX coverage. Oh, Saul boy. has a slight smile on his face. Yeah. He's slightly amused by that. <laughs> um, this next one, and I had to look this up, it's uh, Swedish Krona. So thank you. This message comes from Sweden. Love you guys. This is such a sad day. Thank you. We appreciate it. Um, yeah. All texts said, I'm staying calm about this, but understand why others aren't. I'll react when it's set in stone or s- supporting from St. Louis. As always, y'all are the best. Yeah, and it's funny because he's in St. Louis, so he's just watch a different feed of the game. But but I don't know if he'll get this. Yeah. I don't, listen, I want to I want to say a couple things. First of all, John Gambadoro is in my mentions asking for an apology. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So here you go, Gambo. I'm giving you your apology. You had some of this. Congratulations. Good job on this reporting. And, and, and I also want to point out that Elliot had Elliot and Jeff, I think, mentioned this possibility like a couple months ago. And then it sort of just died I down. Know. I asked Elliot if I was right in remembering that he said, yeah, we did. It was way back. So a lot of people have been on this for a little while. We just didn't I didn't know how real this possibility was. I kept thinking it was plan B because I had seen it be plan B so many other right. times. But as Elliot said, we've reached the bottom. Uh, we've reached the end. So good job reporting by Elliot Freeman, by by Frank Saravalli and by John Gambadoro on this story. Um, the other thing that I just want to come back to, you know, I, I know people are like feeling sorry for us right now. We're going to be OK. We're going to be all right. I think I think we all still have jobs. He's looking over at Espo and Saul right now. We're still going to have jobs, apparently. Okay, so that's good news. Some people won't. Yeah. Some people won't. Those are the people that my my heart goes out to. And I'm not going to read some of the texts that I got today from people because I'll probably start crying on the air with some of them. I, I read one of them to you guys. Like how this is impacting lives in so many ways that nobody even thinks about. I, I'm just so sorry for all of those people Truly, truly, my heart goes out to you. Yeah, and, and I'm going to piggyback on that because I, too, I've been on the inside of that looking out for a long time. And I still have a lot of friends there. I have a lot of people that I consider family there. My, some of my best friends work for this organization. And I was speaking to them as recently as yesterday and literally didn't see this coming. We, I mean, I'm sincere. And even they said we, they didn't see it. Today was different. Yeah. And, and there's some guys that are, are, are really having a hard day today. And all I can say, and I know a lot of them are watching right now yeah. because they're getting ready for a game. But this, the, unfortunately, the game against Vancouver is not on their mind. This is. But to what you said, Craig, these aren't millionaires. They're not millionaires. that can go, oh, yeah, I'll just go buy another million dollar house in a new city. They're not. They don't have those things. They've got kids in school. It's harder. They're 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 not paycheck to paycheck, but it's but it's a different lifestyle. And these guys now their life has changed. Many of them have been here for 20, 30 years, and now that's mm-hmm. different. All I gotta say, and this is again, this is a message to those guys, and I'm sincere. I went through it. Uh, that was my life. Every day going to the rink and working for this franchise. It was my life. I lived and breathed and bled Arizona Coyotes. I did. It was my identity. It was my family's identity. It was my life. And I got out and it was hard and it was really hard. And I, and I went through some really dark times and you know what? I ended up great. I got to work with these wonderful people in this wonderful atmosphere. I've never been happier than I am right now. And that's the truth. And I want to tell every one of you guys out there right now, that are struggling and going, what am I going to do? How am I going to get up tomorrow? What am I going to say to my kids? It's going to be okay. It is because you, you work hard. You're good people. It's going to be okay. I don't know how. I don't know where. I don't know how it's going to work out. But I know all of you. And I've talked to a lot of you today. It's going to be okay. You're going to find your way through this. And the hardest part is figuring out this isn't who you are. 
that doesn't define you. That job, that organization, that team, that logo, that doesn't define who you are. You're much more than what that logo says. So I want to speak to you people. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Just hang in there. And by the way, call me because I'd be glad to talk to everybody individually. And a lot of you already have. So I just want to make sure I get that out to those people because I, I know a lot of them are watching. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to keep reading Super Chats. This one comes from Jordan. Born and raised in Arizona, currently reside in Utah, and that just sucks. I don't want the move. I miss watching the Coyotes, but don't want it like this. Just sad. Thanks, Jordan. Um, SoCal Abs fan said, sending love from DNBR fam. Question, do you think the Coyotes will have any sort of send-off slash goodbye at their last home game just in case? It's interesting. That's interesting. I, I hope so. I hope they do something to acknowledge the fans that have supported them through all this. <laughs> well, it's Fan Recognition Day. Mostly thin. Fan Appreciation Day as yeah. a, already. Yeah. And I think what we're seeing by the no comment, I am curious to see what the response from the organization is going to be over the next seven days. Yeah. And I'm wondering how happy they're going to be to see me <laughs> in the building on, on that day. Because I don't know if I said everything they wanted me to say. <laughs> um, Tom said, with all due respect, lifelong fan, they're trying to build a third arena in Arizona. Why? I think the NHL called their BS team as hostage to RS dev, dev owners gutted. Yeah, I mean, <sighs> the first two didn't exactly work out, I guess. <laughs> One's not no. an NHL building. So um, Chris said, as a PHNX diehard, thank you to Craig, Leah and PD for this and all the coverage. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for following along, Chris. Yep. And another Chris, explain the deal with ASU that Morello walked away from. Uh, it's, I mean, I, I'm not going to get into that now, but they, they were talking with ASU about building on ASU land a while back. But the sports book, the inability to put a sports book on ASU land, among other things, is what killed it. Um, all right. This one comes from Glassdoor Gamer said, I feel for fans. I was an Expos fan and went through a lot of the same pain. Selig hated us, though. Hope the best for you, you all. Um, yeah, a lot of fans have gone I through this. I want to see do this Read name. the next line. Yeah, I was waiting for Lee read to the read next this next name. Notice that I didn't read the Swedish <laughs> name uh, either. This is in Russian. <laughs> so this person sends us a $10 super chat. Um, my father would lull my aunt to sleep by pretend announcing Roadrunners games. He was a huge Coyotes fan until he died. Mm. For the first time, I am glad he isn't alive to see this disgusting stab in the back. <sighs> that is, inc uh, I, there are a lot of personal stories. And, and I want to say this too. There are four games left, and we're going to cover the post-game shows because that's what we do here. And we're going to get on tonight. We're going to talk about the Vancouver Canucks game. And guess what we're not going to talk about? We're not going to talk about the arena tonight. We're going to have fun. There's a good chance I might be drunk. Just throwing that out there if you want to tune in <laughs> because it might be a little bit exciting. See if PHX gets me an Uber, but that's a whole other story. But but I do want to say this. I think it's important that this community and, and this outlet follows this path. And I think that, that I want to be part of the voice as this franchise moves on, if they do move on. I want to be here to tell those stories. I want to be here to tell the stories of the people that the fans that have stuck by this. I want to talk, tell the stories of the staff members that have been through this. I want to make sure that if this is what happens, and again, it's an if, if this happens, I want to make sure that this outlet and this community has the ability to put a bow on it in the way that they deserve to, oh, because yeah. I don't feel like I've, I've been treated that way from the team. Yeah. We have a lot of stories still to tell and a lot of different <laughs> angles to cover yeah. on this. Uh, and trust me, I've been, planning some of them already with whoever we'll, we'll reveal all that later <laughs> yeah, but there's a idea. lot more to tell you about this team we, we're not going anywhere anytime soon so we'll be here for you yep absolutely um thor race thor racing 99 said thank you for the coverage through all of this thank you all for following along and watching that and doesn't happen without them being a Thank you, thank you to, Greg. thank you to talking, diehard talking like all the diehards everybody who has watched like all the people who watched last night's post game show after a five nothing loss yeah. to uh, to Seattle, like we appreciate you all, and you're all diehard fans, and you don't deserve this. Um, John nine ninety nine feeling very Sonics esque per my mom. We're gonna uh, we're gonna stay. We're gonna stay. Then leaves absolutely gutted all day. A lot of uh, I feel like we've heard from the a lot A's, of super chats, Sonics and Expos. I think we're halfway to our goal of raising the money to buy the uh, team from the Coyotes uh, with all listen, these super chats today. Listen, so. listen, listen. Like we need a, a Ted Lasso, Green Bay Packers esque situation here. Um, SC said, "Y'all know the Coyotes were not my first team, but I've come to love them and all of the fans as much, if not more, than my original team. My heart is breaking." And I do want to say, I actually talked to PD on the phone this morning and it really does feel like heartbreak it feels like 
Like, if you're feeling feelings of heartbreak and grief, just know that those are very normal things to be feeling right now. Betrayal. Like, what? Well, I know these are things that are said to people who are going through, like, loss of people, but whatever emotion is coming up for you, like, that makes sense. And I hope that, like, you allow yourself to feel. Yeah, sports. It's sports. Yeah. That's why we're here. That's why this whole station exists. It's sports. Sports brings people together, brings families together. It's something we talk about. It's become part of our lives. And the commitment that the people we've had and followed it followed us here through our diehards and listenings and chats and watch-alongs and, and meetups, this is more than just, hey, I'm watching this team on TV. It's more than that. And, and that's the part that hurts. And yeah, does it hurt? Absolutely it hurts. It's going to be hard. I don't know how I'm going to watch the game tonight. I, I don't. Four I, it, peaks? Oh, their four, four check wasn't good. Who the hell cares? <laughs> Oh, they're four chicks. I am. Yeah. Thanks, four Max, peaks is four how peaks. we're going to be watching. But, but it is. It's sports. And that that's what sports does. And we've seen that over and over again in this community, what sports does. And I'm proud to have been a part of this. And, and I don't know where my journey goes from here, but I'm proud. Very, very proud that I've been a part of this and what this has created for the sports community that desperately needed something to bring everybody together. And I'm extremely proud of the work I've done. I'm ex honored to have worked with you guys. Uh, this is a dream. I love what I do. And 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 thank you for letting me come in and, and, and share a little bit of that fun every once in a while. Um, Chip, thank you for the super chat. If you want to send your follow up with your message, I will read it, oh, it a little bit later. Oh, here it is. Um, Carolina fan, small markets work, but AZ deserves better. Yeah, we've seen we've seen it work. Absolutely. Yep. Um, Pat O, when one door closes, another door opens. Love you guys. Absolutely, Pat. Thank you. Steven said, guys, I'm just so, so sorry. I'm feeling the pain like bad today, but I feel the most for you guys and the team employees. Thank you for all you do and for the excellent reporting. Thank you, Steven. Appreciate it. Uh, the bearded gentleman said, went to Roadrunners games at the Coliseum when I was eight. Went to Coyotes games at AWA when I was 11. Went to Sundog games in PV. Mm. Went to <laughs> games in Glendale. I'm 38 now. I'm devastated. AM has betrayed us all. Yeah, this for a lot of people, this goes back a really, really long time. I mean, I'm curious. I brought up a point, though. He went to Roadrunners game, and I know we haven't talked about it yet. How does this affect the American League team? And they've got a playoffs, a playoff run coming up. Don't know yet. I mean, all, all that will no, shake no, out. No, I know That's it, like, but, yeah. but it, Right. Yeah. yeah imagine it's, being it's a part There's a lot of questions still it's to be answered, which is why yep. this is not the last time we're going to talk yeah. about this, obviously. Yeah. So. You know, let's. I, I I don't know where that goes, but let's root the hell out of those guys down in their playoff run this year down in Tucson. Uh, next one, time for Jack said, "Is it stupid that I feel upset? I'm from the desert and have always considered Yotes my home team because they wore the desert on their sleeve, so to speak. It is absolutely not stupid that you feel upset. Like, please do not think that. Yep. I am upset. <laughs> I'm extremely upset, and I know a lot of." Other people are as well. Um, Xavier Jackson, as a Devils fan, I hate this for the fans and employees. Ownership ruined this, not you guys. Thank you. All right, guys. <laughs> we should probably call it uh, not a day because we'll be back for the game very shortly. <laughs> call it an afternoon. Do you want to yeah. give us a summary, Craig? Kind of sum everything up and where we're sit right now today at 430 from the best of what we've gleaned today. Well, I mean, it. You, you've heard what Frank and, and Elliot both said. We, it sounds like we're well down the road toward making this happen. There are some legal and contractual things that still have to be worked out, but it really sounds like this is happening and the Coyotes will be playing in Salt Lake City next season. Couple more super chats before we get <laughs> of out of here. Are. Sam wouldn't be where I am without the Coyotes being here. I got to play high school hockey in AZ and cover the Virginia ASU hockey team while in school there. Love what you all have done for the fans. So much that has come in the hockey in Arizona because of the Coyotes. And we'll talk about that in the coming weeks yep. as well. And then Greg, $10, buy Craig a beer. Going to be one hell of a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Greg. Um, and thank you, everybody, for being here in the good times and the bad. And obviously, this is probably the lowest of lows. Um, but we're, we're still going to talk through it. We're going to get through it. Like PD said, we're not going anywhere just yet. We want to make sure that... If and when this happens, there is all of the closure in the world and we are going to do this all together as a community because this community of fans deserves nothing less. So sincerely from the bottom of our hearts, we appreciate all of you and we appreciate the staff, the team. We appreciate Frank Saravalli and Elliot Friedman for hopping on with us. Um, and yeah, that's really all and more to I come. have to say. Stay yeah, tuned. More, more to come. come. We'll be live again tonight. Yeah. PHNX Coyotes After Dark, 730 start.
should be an interesting one. Um, be sure to subscribe to the BHNX Sports YouTube channel so you never miss when we go live. Um, and <laughs> be sure also to support the great work here at PHNX. If you're just a Valley sports fan, PHNX Sports is the place to get your Valley sports coverage. Um, Craig, I'm sure, will have tons of stories coming on gophnx.com. We want to make sure you check that out and become a diehard. gophnx.com slash diehard. So many perks to being a diehard and being part of this family and being a member of our discord and you know we're we're still looking forward to seeing everybody and we have some stuff planned still so we'll read this one last super chat from luke before we wrap up here spent many nights rocking my first kid to sleep while watching rebuilding yotes team i hope i can share it with her someday yotes forever perfect close yep that's it for now everybody thank you so much we'll be back later tonight we appreciate you all we'll see you soon Y'all silly like the mayor. 